I request all the uh, participants, speakers, guest, guest of honor to switch on your video. We are going to start the session. I request all the uh, participants, speakers, guests, guest of honor to switch on your video. We are going to start the session. Uh, good evening to all. A very warm welcome and greetings of the hour to all our revered members of Charles Walter Society for Innovation and Research. Welcome back to yet another virtual grand summit on education. I, Dr. S. Nagarajan, Principal of Surendra Institute of Engineering Management, Siliguri, and Deputy Director of CWSAR, invite you all to join for the prayer from virtual lighting of lamp to formally inaugurate the world's greatest virtual summit on education. Thank you so much uh, for joining the uh, today's event. I would like to say a few words about our organization, CWSIR. Charles Walter Society for Innovation and Research, founded by Dr. Smita Diwari in 2019. And under the able presidency of Dr. Abhishek Pandey, vision for promoting research and innovation and targets the mission to strengthen the society with enlightened intellect and wisdom through this specific ideology from the specified specialized field. CWO, uh, CWSAR is a staunch believer that research, creativity, and innovation can only guide the entire fraternity of education to a destiny that can produce uh, good literature, research scholars, national and international patterns, the wider perspective to develop and implement feasible definition of uh, education. Uh, believing in team and collaborative work Charles Walter Society for Innovation and Research pays heartfelt gratitude its uh, educate, executive members, state and country coordinators, uh, country ambassadors, board of directors, and secretariat, and all our governing bodies. Before moving on to the uh, today's agenda, I would like to say a few words about uh, uh, today's summit on education. The World Education Summit is the premier international platform dedicated to innovation and creative action in the education sector. Here, top decision makers share insights with on the ground practitioners and collaborative to rethink and find out various emerging opportunities in the education landscape at present and in future. The summit aims to explore the groundbreaking innovations and encourage steps to ensure significant improvements in the global education sector. No doubt, education has been one of the most impactful sectors worldwide. World Education Summit would provide everyone with the opportunities to network, share your experiences, and expand knowledge in the fast developing academic sphere. So we are going to have two day session in day one, that is today, we are going to discuss about a grassroots approach which deals with the new educational system from infrastructure to building a strong foundation. And tomorrow, we will be discussing about uh, a journey towards a new world which deals with new way of learning with offline, online education and the blended learning. 
the concluding day of the event especially tomorrow the event would feature about the future of education in india and the role of digital system with this preamble i invite uh, dr kushum kanwar executive director meetex cwa sir to start the session with her intro speech ma'am over to you uh, thank you so much mr Nagar nagarajan uh, for your um, uh, you know introduction and greetings and namaste to all luminaries and participants. Uh, thank you, CWSIR, Charles Waterter, Society for Innovation and Research, Dr. Abhishek Pandey, sir, for the honor. The vision of CWSIR is to empower, enable, and inspire the trend of research and innovation to learners with the right foundation of values and culture to academic e excellence for global perspective and to create an ecosystem for the holistic development of all stakeholders. Our mission is to provide an environment for research and innovation, encourage the research bent of learning that creates multivalent competencies in growing learners to enable them to becoming analytical leaders. Our commitments, CWSIR is committed to uplift the society by providing voice and platform to women who are in the field of research and social work, thus strengthening them nationally and globally. Empowering schools to eliminate the rural and the urban divide. Enhancing quality learning through sessions, igniting the spirit of innovation and research. To work towards achieving the United Nations SDGs, Sustainable Development Goals to create a harmonious society. International collaboration to work on common projects to give maximum learning exposure to the budding innovators. Our services, the society strives to empower and support every learner in the domain of innovation and research by providing a platform for the following. Guidance to write theses and research proposal writing. Guidance by experts to get original research papers published assistance to get international patents, placements for researchers, and for those who are involved in research, innovation, and academia. Provision of platform to demonstrate innovative practices in education, commerce, art, science, and technology, and others as well. Recommending the eligible members for the UN talks and for conducting master training in schools, colleges, and universities around the globe. Curating international conferences, summits, quality sessions under our initiative. So our initiative, MeTex, organizes national and international conferences, seminars, symposiums, and quality workshops, academic curriculum assistance, and content writing. MeTex is recognizing and honoring the genuine contribution of individuals in diverse streams and disciplines with certified and authorized awards and honoris causa doctorate on the basis of the exceptional work. It proposes to introduce the International Journal of CWSIR in the near future. Innumerable strategies and projects to empower women are uh, in the offing. Uh, de developing numerous workshops and training sessions for girls in schools and colleges. So to wrap up, and last but not the least, personality grooming sessions, mentoring, and coaching. Thank you. Namaste. Uh, over to you, Mr. Nagaraju. Thank you so much, ma'am. As a moderator, it is my duty to uh, formally welcome and give my gratitude for accepting our invitation. And with that note, uh, it, this is my immense pleasure to announce the world's best brands as the chief guest, guest of honor and keynote speakers in World Education Summit, organized by Charles Walter Society for Innovation and Research. We feel so blessed to listen to the uh, talk of history creators in the context of education in this grand global summit. It is really great to be witnessing the enlightenment, bringing wisdom and an iconic talent together. I would like to thank uh, Honorable Education Minister, uh, Dr. Sri Dhar uh, Dharmendra Pratan for accepting our invitation uh, to be the chief guest of uh, these two days uh, World Education Summit. Thank you, sir, for accepting, your, uh, accepting our invitation. 
I also thank uh, Sri Anurag Thakur, Ministry of State, uh, Finance and Corporate Affairs, Government of India, and Sri Arjun Ram Megwal, Ministry of State for Parliamentary Affairs, Government of India, for accepting our invitation and uh, the deliver uh, inaugural speech uh, today and tomorrow. And I also I would like to uh, uh, mention uh, the government of India uh, supporting these two days uh, uh, mega event, the MSME, uh, government of India, and Ministry of Education, government of India, and Ministry of Corporate Affairs, government of India, and uh, Department of Science and Technology. On behalf of CWSIR and my own behalf, I convey my sincere gratitude to all the government organizations for constantly supporting us to organize such a wonderful uh, event for the benefit of uh, faculty members as well as for the, the young research scholars to pursue their next uh, level of education. Uh, with that small note, I will move on to the today's agenda. I think we are waiting for our chief guest and guest of honor. So with that uh, meantime, I would like to uh, invite the uh, speakers to start the uh, delegations. Uh, first of all, I would like to uh, invite uh, Dr. Sandeep Marwa, the Chancellor, AAFT University Senior uh, Academician to start the session with his open talk. Thank you very much, Nagarajan. Let me extend my heartiest thanks to Charles Walter Council of Innovation and Research for inviting me here and giving me this wonderful opportunity to be part of this beautiful board. Uh, some of the most prominent educationists and speakers are here from all over the world. What a pleasure to be here with them on this evening. Uh, let me start with two very powerful lines. Let me explain to you this in English, whether it is north, south, east or west, whether you're in India or abroad, whether you are on the top of the hill or you're standing at a seashore, whether you are in a lush green garden and looking at some colorful flowers or maybe looking at the most beautiful woman on earth. But the fact is, there are two things which are much more beautiful than what you can see with your naked eyes. And these two things are your thinking and your feelings. And the best part is that both the things are right within you. On this very auspicious day, let's pray. Hey, Lord, give me good thinking. Give me good feelings so that I can do good deeds. And through my good karmas, I would love to convert this earth into heaven. This is what I believe. I'm sure you will also believe in the same. The best part is that the whole education system is based on these two very important words, the feelings and the thinking. Well, uh, thanks to the government of India for coming out with a new education policy, which has given us ample opportunity to discuss, to have brainstorming session, to explore ourselves, to get into the details of once again, into the system of education. And we have come out with large number of new and old things which you would love to repeat, discard, add, subtract, um, uh, and whatnot. But at the end of the day, I have, I'm happy that I've been part of more than 200 webinars in last almost 18 months and done enough brainstorming sessions. And now time has come that we should all get down to a job, right into the classroom to our institutions so that we can give best of the education to our students. Well, before we get into the large discussion by the experts from all over the world, let me put up the new definition of education to all of you. Well, uh, we have read enough about education, but this time education has a different meaning for me. When I say education, it starts with E. And for me now, education means entertainment. It should be exciting and it should be energetic. This is very important. All what you've been doing it so far, I don't know, but now what is required a thorough entertainment, it should be like an entertainment. People should enjoy the education, not it should not be forced on you or the teacher should not be uh, uh, agitated of delivering education. I mean, I've seen in 28 years in education, different moods, setups, emotions, teachers and students. So that's how I'm coming to this nutshell. 
And it should be exciting because the education should be the institution part should be so important that uh, the student should be eager and anxious to come back to the institution next morning, rather than skipping and bunking from the classes. Well, if this is the way we take it, trust me, you might need to change somewhere here and there the curriculum and the syllabus, but yes, you will be able to attract students back into the classroom in full strength. The D stands for dedication. When I say dedication, yes, the basic principle of punctuality, regularity, sincerity, they're very important because without that, you cannot get into education system, nor you can actually uh, receive the education. And that's D stands for dedication. All these three things, you don't have to put a label on your head that I'm a dedicated person. These things, these three things, your punctuality, regularity, and sincerity, where they are enough to show that you are a dedicated teacher, you're a dedicated educator, you're a dedicated student, very important. And these, of course, stands for discipline. And discipline is the key of uh, uh, this new education system. We have to bring back uh, all that discipline back into the institutions so that uh, we, we are in a position to deliver our best to our students. D also stands for a very strong determination, very important, because this is what is losing. Students are confused, teachers are confused, the system is confused, no. I think we should let's stick to something good and create a determination to reach to that destination. Well, when I say you, you means working under controlled circumstances. As very well said by Dr. Kusum, SDG is a very important word which has given to you know, us by United Nations. Every government uh, body, every private body, every institution must talk about SDG, the Sustainable Development Goals. That means we have to learn how to work in the given resources, in the given resources. Very important. You just cannot, I mean, when, when your fee is reasonable, you, you, you have to be, uh, you have to work within that parameters. You cannot uh, start playing with the rocket when you are only paid for a, a helicopter. So very important, uh, we have to understand this, students, they have to understand this, and that will also bring in the sense of saving into our students. When I say C, C stands for communication, very important. I mean, like it's an age of communication and uh, uh, very important to, to reach to the students, to the mind and hearts of students, very important. And what you're using, the language, the words, the explanation, the vocabulary, all these things are going to matter now because uh, there's a lot which is available to the student more than the teachers, mind you. And teachers, they are still stuck to their old habits of explaining things in a much lengthier and, and probably in their old primitive methods. But students, they need to know uh, the new, new method, new ways of communication. And C also stands for commitment. Very important, the, the commitment part is missing, unfortunately, from the whole society, not only in India, but all over the world. And that commitment we have to bring back to the, to the classroom, to the institutions, to day-to-day -day affairs. And that can be only delivered to students through very strong stories and history and, uh, and, and some uh, wonderful case studies. And I'm sure uh, students will understand what we uh, mean commitment. A, of course, stands for uh, being ambitious, very important. I mean, why, why Indian students all the time think about getting into a job rather than thinking of starting their own enterprise? So that ambition is to be created, that yes, you have capacity more than what you are actually thinking you have won. So that capacity and capabilities to be developed within these students so that they can jump for entrepreneurship rather than only looking for jobs. So that ambition is to be created and who can do that? Only institution, trust me, more than their own parents, it's the institution which can create a huge ambition into the students. And if A also stands for, my dear friends, for attitude. If you're higher the ambitions, then you have to have a very polite attitude. You have to be supporting, you have to be down to earth, you have to be simple, you have to be compassionate, and then only your ambitions are going to be fulfilled. The T stands for being tough and uh, uh, very important that is also. 
our students they they are then then they get nervous the minute they get some kind of a complication or an unforeseen thing they get nervous they have no answer for that i mean i it never happened in our in our case at least in with our generation and and they, they need counselors they need uh, consultancy they need uh, so many things for even a smallest thing possible well that's on one side okay doesn't matter but then they have to be develop the sense of taking decision they're so undecisive they're on their own they can't take decisions for a, one or other thing so that being tough is very important in the whole education system p also stands for techno civi which i mean i need not to say thank uh, we, we have to thank to the pandemic which has taught us how to be techno savvy and all the smallest and the biggest institutions they become technically fit today and we all are absolutely ready uh, to face any these kind of circumstances we know that we will be able to deliver education to our students through different modes and means and i stands for information as i earlier said and information there is a bombardment of information now only thing is the job of the institution is to guide the student to have best of the information possible from the best of the sources and students should not get confused with the um, uh, uh, with the ample information which is freely available on his desk so information need which can make him intelligent and that intelligent that he should be in a position to create some innovative ideas and all in that's what i mean to me and o stands for the overall development there are still many institutions which still believe in chalk and talk and i think that stage is over so we have to bring in lots sort of workshops seminars symposium interaction programs festivals visits um, uh, and what not co curricular activities so that there should be a 360 degree development of the student when he's in school or college and that's what is needed right now and last but not the least is n n speaks about the nationalism being nationalist you have to be patriotic you have to love your country you have to love your countrymen and you have to build up that kind of a feeling for your nation because then only you will be able to bring back a highest level of energy into you for your nation for your work and for your people with all these words i would love to recite two lines ke jis or chale hum masti mein jhuk jaye udar ambar bhutal azad vatan ke vashinde har geet hamara hai badal vividh prant hai apni apni bhasha ke abhimani hum lekin sabse pehle duniya walo hindustani hum well i'm i'm proud to say that i am indian thank you very much for giving me this wonderful opportunity uh, uh, and uh, I'm happy that uh, I have been. Uh, you've been listening to me so patiently. Thanks a lot. Thank you so much, uh, Professor, for your uh, wonderful inaugural speech. You have given uh, insight uh, about the current education system. So it was a wonderful uh, inaugural speech I ever had in my uh, career. Thank you so much. Uh, with that, you know, I call upon the next speaker of uh, today's uh, session, uh, Professor Ashwani Walpato. Professor from Brazil, ma'am, over to you. Thank you for the possibility to be here. Thank you to the possibility to join to so special minds around the world. And special minds could be innovative, so innovative. And what is innovation? How could we innovate in a classroom, inside four walls, or when we talk about hybrid education in just a screen, how could we touch the minds of our students? What can we do to transform, to motivate the learning? It is, a serious question, very serious question. Uh, we have talking about skills, soft skills. We have a talk about new methodologies, open methodologies that change students in protagonist of the process of learning. Is it enough? Well, 
Education is the principle to be a good life, is the principle to have a better world, is the principle to build relationship, is the principle to be a plenty life. So what we can do, how to innovate in education? skills, open methodologies, distance education, technologies. What we can get, in fact, really, to touch our students' mind? I say, not the is, that's not a simple answer, but it's possible for sure, it is. Um, first of all, I think we have to do our education totally different from what our grandpa, our grandmas had, for sure. It's too, uh, the education is still under the hands of the teachers and professors and scientists of education, but we have to support new cognitive skills, new cognitive stimuli, new cognitive possibilities to our students. Open different windows to anyway, to transform the horizon in a colorful horizon. How could we do that? For sure, I don't know the answers i don't know i don't have the answer totally but we are looking for and when we work in a net in a summit like this for sure changing ideas it is easier it transforms the process in an easier way well in brazil since 17 2017 we are implanting Implement, uh, we are doing the implementation of BNCC. It are a new possibilities to students. Instead of a grid of disciplines, we are transforming it in a course units with a flexibility possibilities to students make their options for each content they want to study. It is part of the process. It's part of the, uh, the way to get students and conduct them to a new education. It's not easy. We have to change paradigms because what we know, we know the Milk way. <laughs> yes, I don't know if you, we have this planetary expression, but in Brazil we say that is the way the milkman percourse. How could we do that? Flexibilize, flexi, flexibilize, oh, oh, flexibilizing the process is a way to do that. Not easy, I say. Not easy, everybody wants to say, because we offer usually red disciplines to our students. The way is done to do it as ancient, since the ancient times we are doing, but we have to change it in a spread way, choosing everything, including the way we put our chairs inside the classroom. The way we have the blackboards, if we have blackboards, using smartphones as a window to world. Anyway, we don't have the answers, but we are looking for the answers and it's part of the process. We recognize the cognitive skills are different. We no more in a logical society, but a new one, a digital society 
And for a digital society, we need other solutions. I don't know if we are in the right way in Brazil, if BNCC is the right way, but we are trying nationally do the different way to our kids, to our students. And flexibilizing the process is a way to do that. Problems we have, strong problems, lack points, for sure. But we are trying. And that's part of the process. I am totally disponible for questions and answers. So I have to say thank you to listen to me to listen to my ideas and what we are doing in Brazil. Thank you. Thank you so much, ma'am, for your inspiring speech. Uh, it's time to acknowledge our uh, sponsors and organizers on this uh, the mega virtual event. Let me share my screen. So today and tomorrow, we are going to have two days uh, virtual Maha event on World Education Summit. Uh, it is supported by modern group of institution. Thank you so much. And this is our uh, agenda of uh, day one today. We are going to discuss about grassroots approach. And tomorrow, we are going to discuss about the journey towards new world in different perspective. And our sponsors, uh, Charles Water Council for Innovation and Research, uh, Charles Water Society for Innovation and Research, and our academic partner, Modern Group of Institution. And our special acknowledgement and uh, gratitude to our uh, Government of India, various uh, organizations of uh, Government of India, MSME, Ministry of MSME, Government of India, and Ministry of Education, Government of India, uh, Ministry of Corporate Affairs, Government of India, and Department of Science and Technology, Government of India, for their constant support and encouragement to organize such a wonderful uh, event for the benefit of faculty and uh, young research people. I would like to share the, the invitation which we have communicated to our uh, honorable uh, education minister. This is for your kind information. So the president of uh, our council has communicated and sent a uh, official invitation to education uh, minister, uh, honorable Sri uh, Dharmendra Pratan uh, to uh, take part in this particular event. Sir has accepted our invitation and he is the chair person for uh, today's event. Uh, tomorrow he'll be going to uh, address the uh, gathering. Thank you so much. Uh, we'll move on to the uh, our agenda point. Next, I call upon Dr. Bharat Rawa, Associate Professor uh, from Ganan University, USA. Thank you. Thank you uh, for inviting and uh, giving me opportunity to speak no, in no, this. No, no. Can you hear me? Is my voice is audible? Yes, sir. Perfect, sir. Perfect, sir. You can proceed. <clears throat> Thank you. So, so you know, the uh, today, like, focus is more on education. Uh, the topic, the previous speaker also already talked uh, so many wonderful things. So in perspective of US and uh, you know, US is leading the, the, the globe in education sector. What we do here differently than the rest of the world? Okay. So this is like main uh, thing. Uh, so here is focus on like learning outcome. What student learn at the end of the, the class, at the end of the semester, at the end of the program. Okay. Everything is calculated, everything is uh, recorded. So which make like uh, you can assess, you can have like, uh, you know, uh, some measurable tools, you can make them and measure them that where, how you progress, 
what you did pre compared to your previous, how you did with uh, compared to your colleague, how you did compared to a uh, nationwide. Right? So all those things are really, uh, I, I think I realize is very important uh, in US uh, education system. And I believe nowadays all our world, everybody is following the same, same strategy. So as an educator, like for me, like every day, it's not an easy job. Uh, say every class is, you know, challenging. Uh, every uh, need to be prepared. If you think that you're going to do a mundane thing every day, then you, you cannot be a good teacher. Okay? So we take, we take responsibility what we teach. We take responsibility what we know. Okay, so we should not be pretended, you know, the, that we know everything. And uh, when we talk in the class, we need to be tell them the fact, right? So many times our curriculum or our syllabus or those are very, very old. And uh, the modern, since I'm in the technology world, I teach technology classes. So anything we teach is like out of date, outdated. And uh, many things is changed, many more uh, reality came there. So we need to keep uh, the students are more advanced. They try to Google uh, much faster than us. And it's always also again challenging. A student will keep challenging you by Googling. And uh, again, you need to respond uh, uh, and uh, how to tackle those situations. Those are like uh, really important uh, aspects for the modern teacher. Um, so, in nutshell, uh, you know, in academia, like a previous speaker also said that we face every day, you know, the very challenging and still we try to deliver same good uh, lecture uh, in class. We might have very sad situations we are facing or still we need to go and deliver. We don't want to reflect what from where we are coming to the class. Okay? We want to deliver best of us. So this is the scenario, even though there is huge turmoil going in our life, in our insight, and in our face reading, we try to make that, okay, we are calm, quiet, and uh, deliverable. This is the face of today's teacher. This is required, actually. It's not, uh, so if you're feeling angry or anxiety in class, uh, people will complain. The student will complain, and you'll be kicked out from academia. So this is somehow like, you know, we, we are in, the, in this world. And also not only the teaching, uh, we may be boiled, boiled down with many other internal uh, issues, internal uh, politics, okay? So politics is everywhere. This politics may be for competitions. This politics may be for promotion. This politics may be staying top of the world, staying number one uh, positions, right? So you, you face a lot of those issues. And uh, always, uh, I uh, I love. I came from you know Indian culture, India, and so we we follow uh, our traditional uh, the learning process. What we learn, guru kul mechanisms. We trust, we respect our teachers, and uh, we follow. And uh, I think it's worked very well. Uh, and so far, like I, I as I remember my high school, middle school teachers, still they are connected with me. This is almost like 50 years I came out from schools and still they know, don't know me. So this some kind of connection is very important like uh, in education. So just going, coming, uh, giving the lectures and get out from the class. Uh, but uh, you need to, every class, you need to take opportunity and make lifelong impact on students' uh, career. So this is what uh, uh, the last word I want to say, and thank you. Uh, uh, I think there are many more learned speakers are here, and thank you very much. Thank you so much, sir, for your uh, wonderful speech. Next, I call upon Dr. Nishant Mehta, uh, CA Mumbai, to share his views on today's education and future prospects. Next, I call upon 
Dr. Megha Sharma, Founder and Managing Director, Vempower All Foundation, Mumbai. Ma'am, over to you. Hello, good evening, everybody. Thank you, Nagarajan. And I thank all of you for giving me an opportunity to share my insights for the students and the youth. It's really an honor to be a part of this World Education Summit 2021. Aryan Khan walks free after nearly a month in jail for few intimate chats about banned stuff. The bad usage of social media and look at what this has done to him. In the last one and a half year, we all have seen the power of technology and its usage by not only us, but our small kids and the youths. Have you ever realized a year has gone by? In fact, more than a year has gone by and our kids have spent their education time on virtual platforms. Yes, that's the new norm these days. As per the new education policy 2020, the major transformational reforms in the educational sector, which I would like to highlight in the use of technology are educational planning, teaching, learning, and assessment, administration, and management, regulation of self-disclosure and minimal human interface. I repeat, minimum human interface. Increasing access for disadvantaged groups, e-content in regional languages, virtual labs. I repeat, virtual labs. National Education Technology Forum digitally equipped schools, teachers, and of course, the students. These are the new education norms by our national education policy. Today, I would like to discuss about the social media and technology used by the students and would like to share knowledge on how we need to manage our kids and the youth due to excess usage of the technology. The question that always comes to my mind when I think about teens, social media and technology is what will they text next? I'm sure this must be the question in everybody's mind for their kids, for their friends, for the youths. We've seen many IDs getting blocked, including Twitter and Facebook, and has been highlighted all over social media. Many influencers got blocked because they didn't know what they are texting. I'll give a screen challenge to all our viewers. Please open up your mobiles. Take a moment uh, to total how much time you spend daily looking at your mobile screen. I request everybody to open your mobile screen and see how much time you're spending. Just check average screen time. Aren't the results shocking? Four to this five is hours. just mobile screen time. And we may be spending time on laptops, on TV, on somebody else's screen, or maybe tabs also, which is not calculated here. I'll give you some shocking figures. Before that, there is a question that tingles onto my mind always. If I, as a professional, is spending so much time on the screen, what about my youth? What about the school kids? 
I have seen, especially the school kids and the college kids, they are using three, three laptops at one time. One, they are using for games. Second, they are using for their online classes. And third, just to do chatting and social media. So imagine the screen time that they all have. The numbers that I will share with you would be really shocking. Kids today are growing very fast. 70% of the teens have cell phones in a country like India. We are still not developed, but still 78% of the teens have cell phones and almost half of them own smartphones, which includes some kids from the underprivileged section as well. One in four are self-friendly internet users. 23% of the teens also have a tab. 81% teens use social networking sites. Now this figure you must realize. 8 to 18 years old kids, they devote average of 7 hours 38 minutes to use in entertaining media across a typical day. 7 hours and 38 minutes for entertainment screen time only, plus their education time. 100% of EHS students have laptop and an access to the internet. Isn't it shocking? Aren't we seeing that our youth is becoming a slave to the screens? The most commonly apps that are being used by the youths are WhatsApp, Snapchat, Instagram, Viber, Facebook, TikTok which is right now banned in India, but there are other apps which are like TikTok, Pinterest, most favorite, Facebook, and Twitter. What social media are they using? As I said, most favorite, Facebook. 80% of the kids are using Facebook. Only 9% of the kids are using LinkedIn, only 9%. Instagram is also now picking up, which is at 53% of the usage. Google, which is the most searched uh, site and everybody uses it, it is still at only 34%. Twitter, 36%. Pinterest, 16%. Snapchat, 46%. Then MySpace goes at 19% and Tumblr goes at 22%. Imagine the screen time and the apps these kids are using. I will briefly share what kind of uh, posts they are making. 92% people use their own photographs and their real name. That means there are some fake IDs as well, which is very dangerous. The interests that they show on books, movies, music are 85%, which is a good number. At times, kids are shy of using their school name, posting their school name. It stands only at 76%. Imagine. They are studying, they are learning from a school, but still they shy from writing their school or the education form where they're studying. 83% only share their birth dates. So only 72% of the kids share where they come from, their city, town, or wherever they live. 66% are sharing their relationship status also, which may be single or if they are in relationship. The teens are so open now. 
they do share at times their email ids which stands at 53% so the kind of sharing that they do is still not 100% that means they are not sharing 100% genuine stuff there are some kids who hide their identities and they become stalkers or they do any kind of you know stuff which is which is not good which is dangerous so what do we know about teens they are constantly trying to define themselves they crave positive feedback only to help them see how their identity fits into their world they use social media for their feedback but they are looking in a dangerous place i will just share how it is harmful the danger exists in the possibility of a very public rejection because negative feedback is there for anyone and everyone to see another danger is that teens ask for feedback without learning first and not everyone will respond in a supportive way after all everybody is not a parent even parents give a negative feedback at times but for the betterment of their kids what we can do in order to teach our children how to seek feedback and from genuine sources parents should start early by helping their kids identify trustworthy sources most importantly parents need to reinforce that the most influential voice should come from within i repeat the most influential voice should come from within and not from the social media feedbacks we must engage our teens within the family we have to engage with them in a meaningful conversation about internet usage we should talk to them we should talk to the deans we should talk to the counselors as well validate your teens reality and their need to be connected engage your child in drafting the rules for the family for example guidelines for use consequences for breaking those rules model appropriate use of technology minimize texting don't use cell phone laptops at meals first we have to follow this we should not use them and then we have to ask them to follow this we should not use cell phones while driving as well our kids follow us the teens must know that they have the right the parents have the right to check the laptop and phones when we were young we never had them for ourselves and we know they are at a very tender age so they must know that parents have the right to check the laptops tabs and mobile phones whatsapp or social media are okay and what are not that you need to follow and you need to know their passwords what are the responsibilities of being an online user are you have to protect your privacy and we need to ensure that and they should not be engaged in the cyber bullying what are we worried about invading in kids privacy not feeling comfortable with being on social media with them that they have secret accounts we are really worried about these points just as you would establish ground rules and due diligence in person with your kids there is a need to do small things or even more with the internet there are many parental concerns 81% are worried about how much advertisers can learn about their kids through their behavior online 72% are worried their kids is interacting with people they don't know online 70% are worried about 
how their online activity might affect their future academic or employment opportunity. 60% are worried about kids' reputation online. Imagine, at the tender age, we are all worried about their reputation online. I am suggesting few of the apps to protect your kid. Canary, Mama Beer Child Tracker app, Rapid Protect, Progressive Snapshot, My Mobile Watchdog, Mobile Spy, Text Guard, Web Watcher. I will repeat all the apps once again. Canary, Mama Bear Child Tracker app, Rapid Protect, Progressive Snapshot, My Mobile Watchdog, Mobile Spy, Text Guard, and Web Watchers. So dear fellow teachers, educationists, and parents, let us spare some time for the youths and make sure that the social media is a boon for them and not become a disaster for them. Let's all take an oath to make sure that we will spare time from our busy schedule to impart good upbringings to our youths and students. We will make sure that our students and kids and the youth actually use the good power of social media and bring a silver lining to their career. I would rather say, let's strive for a diamond lining for their careers. The school may open school soon. Many have already opened for the higher classes, but for the lower classes also, they may be opening very school. The kids will be back to school. But my friends, e-learning will never go. It will never stop. It was there before COVID. It will be there. In fact, it will be extensively there post COVID now. We will still have hybrid schooling. The technology of e-learning will still be there and the kids are going to be exposed more and more towards the social media and technology. So let's join hands and help our students and the youth to help them use social media in a better way. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Dr. Uh, Mega Sharma for your uh, uh, wonderful conversation. The topic which you have uh, covered today is the need of the hour. It's a burning topic now. So you have uh, covered uh, the various aspects of uh, social media and how it is connected with uh, uh, today's uh, education. It was a wonderful uh, discussion. Thank you so much on behalf of CWSAR. Thank you, Nanda. Uh, before I call upon the next speaker, I would like to share the few conversation which we had it with the uh, Ministry of Education on this uh, wonderful uh, uh, meet. This is for your kind uh, reference and information. This is the conversation we had it with uh, the Secretary of uh, Education, Minister, regarding this, uh, the grand uh, two days educational summit. SAR will be joining tomorrow, the second day of uh, summit. The next one, The another conversation, the screen sort of. Thank you so much, Government of India, various ministry for their constant support and encouragement for making this uh, wonderful event possible today. Uh, this is the invitation which we have uh, communicated to uh, our Honorable 
एजुकेशन मिनिस्टर so once again i convey my sincere gratitude to the all the uh, sponsors and supporters for making this uh, wonderful uh, event possible now it's time to uh, invite the next speaker of today's uh, uh, agenda uh, dr nisan des mehta ca mumbai sir over to you thank you thank you for giving me an opportunity to share my view and express and it's an honor to be part of the world education summit 2021 suddenly the world in the last one year has changed from physical to virtual and this has affected not only us but also a youth a student they have been jumped into the zoom world team meeting google meet and what are they doing the major reform in the new education policy school education curriculum to integrate 21st century skill mathematical thinking and scientific tempo no rigid separation between arts and science between co curricular and extra curricular activity between vocational and academic streams gender inclusion and reduction in curriculum to core concepts well this is a new world before we understand the new changes let's kill our students our kids to be ready for the new world let me ask you one question what is the most global fear in the world you can use the chat box what is one thing which fears you survey and research results show that most people are terrified of speaking in front of a live audience and this is in the list of the top 10 fears globally chances are that in any will at some point people has to speak in public well this can be intimidating the benefit of being able to speak well outweighs any perceived fear and this is what i want to bring to the people and the student and the youth as per the new curriculum as per the new changes in the educational policy you need to be a good communicator a good speaker a fear of public speaking is common for everyone across all age you you and me and everyone during high school giving presentation and talking in front of groups become a regular activity and it will happen more when you get to the college and because of the new curriculum this is going to be a regular format if you are a student struggling with anxiety about public speaking here are the few things i would like to give you to overcome this fear and rock your next presentation very important thing as a student is know your audience a big part of the public speaking is connecting with the audience and you cannot really convene connect with the audience if you don't know something about the people in it if you're presenting in front of the students teacher spend some time thinking about the people in the audience and what they want to hear and this is what help you to create the connect creating a connect will always give you more and more confidence get comfortable with the environment take a few minutes take a pause scope where you're speaking it will help you become more and more confident if it is a classroom you spent countless hours in you still may not be <clears throat> used to being in the teacher spot stay in front of the podium or in the virtual one in front of the camera right across your screen and get a sense of the room think this is a virtual podium and you will see how the layout from the new view third very important point <clears throat> know your purpose there is always a reason for giving a speech why you are communicating what you want to communicate a purpose for wanting to communicate very important to reflect on the purpose for your presentation so you can tailor your measures and take points accordingly talk to your teacher if you need some help when you speak when you practice more and more 
your material well make it easier to remember and you stay on the point and practice is essential because you get used to delivering a speech in a low pressure situation before you have to give to the right audience and if you can manage it don't read from word to word this get boring for the listener it's okay if it is the first time speaking you need practice but you will get out of this habit <clears throat> learn from the people learn from a mentor learn from the teacher people around listen to terex video listen to terex talk you will find you be the format to speak and it will help you out to improvise on your own styling you can watch highly quality presentation online sixth very important point it's always said that you need to love yourself similarly encourage yourself most of the anxiety of public speaking comes from fear that you're going to speak something wrong or disappoint the audience don't worry without meaning to whatever you are negative a self talk with increase your anxiety so make sure a negative self talk should not be there instead of putting yourself down make yourself esteem higher try telling yourself that you're confident you will do a good job and this will help you to make sure how much anxiety can disappear when you think positively so confidence even if you don't feel it when you are delivering a speech or you're communicating with anything you feel little bit anxiety but when the best part is when you have a confidence whether you feel it or not even if you make a mistake or lose the train of thought recover and keep on going your speech only you know the content you know the audience never know the content so don't fear that you're losing something or you're forgetting something let the flow go on a small mistake never makes a difference the main important thing is to keep on going don't even stress share your personality when you worried is it a bit awkward and food and sometimes you fumble goes warm on your hand and you loosen up and you feel that i cannot you try to lose the eye contact don't do that sometimes if you fear that you have lost something or you're losing the confidence take a pause smile to the audience the audience smile back and that gives you confidence and you start from back don't ever think there is a mistake let the mistake go despite following all this grace speak you may still important you may miss a important point and make a blunder instead of thinking about the blunder let it go and tell yourself every speak everything i speak always make sense it will create an impact to the audience i come across a very wonderful platform which is known as toastmaster internationally it's an amazing club for the students they really have a cable club for the student below 18 and for the youth always welcome you have eating plus group which is known as toastmaster toastmaster is a public speaking platform or usp organization non profit which help you become a better communicator and better speaker so what are you waiting for join me in this journey and make sure our youth become more confident speaker communicator and leaders so they can act to the new world the new change in the technology and in the education reform where you don't have a difference between the curriculum but what you want to do you can do with more passion more confidence and more self growth thank you for giving him an opportunity to share about public speaking over to the esteemed nagrajan sir thank you so much sir for your presence and uh, we are grateful to you next i call upon uh, dr rania lambo a dynamic educationist and face of social media to share her views on future of education ma'am over to you well greetings from greece uh, very very honor and excited to be invited today to this world education summit organized by charles water society for innovation research and uh, we are obviously in the age of the fourth industrial revolution and the fourth industrial revolution is changing the world around us with artificial intelligence with robotics with big data internet of things and the main challenges that are related to the exponential growth of digital tools that include robots communication systems 
and associate energy consumption or that the impact on jobs and industry that these tools are creating is huge. Uh, however, they also present huge opportunities to tap because we need highly skilled, but at the same time, flexible, emotionally and socially intelligent professionals that are, can solve tomorrow's problems already from today. So futurizing education for building uh, a workforce for uh, industry 4.0 will lead a more robust professional framework. Education plays an important role in ensuring the skill readiness of the labor force. General education as well as vocational education will have a critical role to play in making this labor force industry ready. And to take full advantage of this opportunity created by advanced technology, we need a similar revolution in education. So this calls for developing education 4.0 for students and teachers that addresses the needs for the fastly developing world around us. Unfortunately, in most schools and colleges, we're still uh, teaching subjects in traditional ways with same all course content. So any uh, discussion on the future of work should go hand in hand with discussion of the future of curriculum and also about those who eventually will deliver it, teachers and students. In this education system of the future, of course, the role of teachers is changing. It's going more to be a more facilitator, guide and mentor. And this will require a, a radical transformation in their approach to focus more on uh, outcome-based teaching. Uh, instead of continuing with traditional ways. And this transformation also must include key areas such as employability, student experience, research excellence, societal impact and benefit for the industry. Today's learner also does not need the instructor-led educational models, but wishes to engage through multiple sources of knowledge at his own pace. So we are faced with the challenge of redefining redesigning the curriculum to keep up with the evolution of skills required to solve problems, to innovate and succeed. Because as a society, we're failing, I think, to meet that challenge and uh, consequently we fail to adequately prepare the next generation for the future. So how will future generations thrive in this changing landscape? How can education and training providers keep pace with this unprecedented level of change? Um, I think there are two, uh, there are three levels. First of all, content, the content, as far as the content is concerned, here we need, of course, to upgrade the technical side of the curriculum to accommodate the learning of next generation robotics, of additive manufacturing, smart materials. But at the same time, we need to incorporate non technical disciplines into the curriculum, such as communication, project management, arts marketing in order to develop cross-cutting competencies and the mindset beyond technical expertise. And of course, we need to pay special attention to questions of ethics, social inclusion, diversity, and sustainability. It means that we need to incorporate sustainable development goals into our uh, lessons. That means also that we uh, need to offer a holistic view of education, and also teach uh, students how to acquire new skills as needed in the new post-COVID era. As far as the learning environment is concerned, um, we need to apply problem, project-based learning, inquiry-based learning, challenge-based learning to stimulate learners to work on challenging real-life problems for which there are no established answers. Encourage learners to contextualize their theoretical learner in relation to how it would be useful in the world around them. Knowledge is not connected to reality. And instead of focusing on standardized thinking, correct answers and objectivity of judgment, we need to create a learning environment that would stimulate creativity, forming of own opinion and diverge interpretation. So create also a culture that accepts mistakes, potential failures, and develop the ability in students to turn those failures into valuable learning experiences. Create environments that can offer experiences to relevant real world conditions, working conditions, and also encourage collaborative learning and stimulate technology enhanced, the technology enabled uh, learning uh, with the use of uh, all this treasure we have of digital tools. The, three, uh, the third part concerns the access of collaboration because 
moving towards the paradigm of lifelong learning, educational institutions also need to evolve, evolve and occupy new roles in the ecosystem. It also implies the, uh, the evolution of existing and emergence of new collaboration patterns. Different types of collaboration are needed in order to ensure a multitude of experiential opportunities, including collaboration with companies, manufacturers, technology providers, startups, other educational institutions via joint platforms, uh, thematic networks, peer-to-peer uh, -peer learning, supporting structures, industry associations, class organizations, similar governments, community. And also that means that we need to further increase the collaboration uh, between uh, industry universities in terms of both volume and diversity of collaboration forms, internships, apprenticeships, mentoring, project banks, think tank competitions, summer schools. Uh, we need to, to acknowledge the role of industry partners as educational research and employment partners and ensuring their engagement in the full students' learning experience, including strategic development. Create more opportunities for exchanging experiences with other educational institutions, facilitate peer-to-peer -peer learning, create effective learning ecosystems that engage all key stakeholder groups, including education and training providers, industry policy makers, supporting structures, broader community. And of course, we need to shift from human-machine interaction towards human-machine collaboration as an evolving collaboration form. Because we are in the threshold of the fifth industrial revolution, and humans should go along with machine. Since uh, students and teachers are not machines, uh, they're humans, so we need to focus also on these uh, dimensions, especially uh, on social emotional learning. And apart from this, we are also in the COVID era. Uh, so we have seen how from the onset of the pandemic, teachers were immediately tasked with implementing business learning modalities, often without any sufficient guidance, training, or resources. Uh, and uh, this uh, actually teachers were largely prepared and even in context with adequate infrastructure, many educators lack the basic ICT skills. Uh, so this crisis has highlighted that both initial and in-service uh, teacher uh, education are need of reform to better train uh, teachers in new methods of education delivery. So this crisis has stimulated uh, also innovation within the education sector. We have seen many innovative approaches. And as Albert Einstein said, uh, crisis is a great blessing for people and nations because the crisis brings progress. And creativity, says Einstein, comes from anxiety as the day comes from the dark night. And I strongly believe that this crisis is a great resetter of economy, society, and education, an opportunity to bring forward long awaited reforms for the development of education community uh, skills. So this COVID pandemic aroused the need of optimizing the role of teachers, since teachers are the agents of change in education, and also this uh, showed the needs for change uh, because it requires skill, teachers to develop survival skills in order to survive and thrive in a certain world the new normal, such as flexibility, adaptability, resilience, empathy. And of course, uh, we have new uh, new demands, we need a curriculum redesign, as I said before, we need hybrid learning, blended learning now, and lifelong learning. Long-standing literacy such as reading and writing are not sufficient anymore. We need new literacies such as technological literacy, data literacy. Why data literacy? Because students are bombarded uh, by an ocean of information, so they need a, a filter, not a filter uh, this information, they need to develop the critical thing, uh, skills. And uh, also um, human literacy, as, uh, as I said before. So um, education as um, an undeniable human right is a bedrock of uh, equal and just inclusive societies and key driver of sustainable development. We need to strengthen the resilience of education systems in order to respond to immediate challenges. And of course, a strong educational system should promote key competencies including solid basic skills, digital, transversal, green, and other life skills which provide strong foundation for resilience, lifelong learning, lifelong employability, social inclusion, active citizenship, and personal development. Uh, thank you very much for your attention. Uh, uh, thank you, Dr. Rani Lambo, for accepting our invitation. Uh, next, I, I would like to uh, introduce uh, the guest of honor of uh, today's uh, 
ஈவன் இன்ஜினியர் ஆனந்தகுமார் ஃபவுண்டர் சூப்பர் தேர்ட்டி பார்ட்னா ஆனந்தகுமார் இஸ் அன் இந்தியன் மேத்தமெட்டிக்ஸ் எஜுகேட்டர் பெஸ்ட் நோன் ஃபார் யூர் சூப்பர் தேர்ட்டி ப்ரோக்ராம் விச் ஹி ஸ்டார்டட் இன் பார்ட்னா பீகார் இன் டூ தௌசண்ட் டூ அண்ட் விச் கோச்சஸ் அண்டர் பிரிவிலேஜ் ஸ்டூடெண்ட்ஸ் ஃபார் ஜேஇஇ அட்வான்ஸ்ட் த என்ட்ரன்ஸ் எக்ஸாமினேஷன் ஃபார் தி இந்தியன் இன்ஸ்டியூட் ஆஃப் டெக்னாலஜி பை டூ தௌசண்ட் எயிட்டீன் Uh, 422 out of 510 students had made it to the iits and discovery channel showcased his work in a documentary kumar has spoken at the mit and harvard about his programs for students from the underprivileged sections of indian society kumar and his school have been the subject of several uh, uh, sphere campaigns some of which have been carried in indian media sources his life and work are portrayed in the 2019 film uh, super 30 where akshay kumar is played by rithik uh, roshan uh, which uh, where kumar is played by uh, rithik roshan on 8th november 2018 anand kumar was honored with the global education award 2018 by malabar gold and diamonds in dubai his efforts in the field of education are considered pioneering anand kumar has been felicitated in the us with education national excellence award Uh, in 2019 by the foundation for excellence in education at a function in san jose california anand kumar received mahavir award in chennai i think sir will be the right uh, person to comment about today's agenda i request sir to share his thoughts on today's topic with his experience sir over to you Anand Kumar sir over to you Sir are you there are you there Okay meantime i will call upon the next speaker uh, Dr uh, Unnath Pandit Professor IP Innovation and Entrepreneurship at uh, JNU formerly been ABVS ME JNU program director AIM Niti Aayog and member IPR TT OSD2 CIM head IP now i request uh, dr unnath pandit to share his views on past present and future of education dr unnath pandit are you there okay we'll move on to the next speaker now i call upon dr rahul kumar shukla sir are you there dr rahul kumar okay now i call upon uh, dr shofi nivani the pillar of our organization the dynamic educationist founder circle of creative masters institute esa ma'am i request you to share your views on present past and future of education over to you ma'am yes sorry i was trying to get off mute hello and thank you so much for the invite and i'm so grateful to be part of this beautiful educational summit that we can all gain insights and be able to pivot better in such challenging times that we're facing the transitioning from where we are and what we are bridging to go to requires a lot of attention from the educators and also school systems and organizations and summits like we are doing and the attention of governments so that we may flourish and allow the generational gap 
between our youngest and the new fast speed of technology that is coming upon our eldest to be minimized through education. And as a creative mindset strategist and consultant, my very core values in this area goes back to the importance of creativity and optimization of a creative mindset in classrooms. And without that, we are not going to be able to go to the next level of research to write topics and then for innovation as well. Uh, the thinking styles, the mindsets, the skill sets that we need to develop. Uh, Professor Rania Kambur brought a lot of uh, pointers that I would like to share and some others. So I don't want to repeat a lot of information for our limited time so we may all gain the maximum insights that can be most useful at this time. During a, a creative process, there is always the thinking and the process. And when that is applied into a classroom setting with mindfulness on creating environment to support that. Emotional and social skills, as mentioned, are extremely important. And as a certified emotional intelligence coach, I am recognizing and seeing that this is being a challenge for many of our youth at this time. They are more comfortable in texting or writing than in-person communication. So the encouragement of creating a platform for youth to be able to speak and express and process their feelings through expression and communication is going to be extremely important. As very much said, the four main uh, skills that are needed in the 21st century are communication, collaboration, creativity, and critical thinking. With that being said, how are we going to enhance those skill sets within classrooms, but mainly to the educators and the leaders and the thought leaders of these organizations and classrooms so that we may collaborate on a global level because of technology, we are able to all meet from different parts of the world and different times. And this is going to be the future of our children, if not faster than what we are expecting. So we need to prepare them and protect them at the same time. So as mentioned, using technology, not as a disaster and catastrophe, but as an asset to victory, overcoming challenges that they may be able to assist their uh, learning skills and understanding. There was a gap research that was done and it implemented children and in schools that were having creative skills and transformational technology added within the way of study were better at and more successful in problem solving, solution finding, critical thinking, also connecting topics and concepts. And isn't that something what our future needs is to really have leaders that are able to be uh, in their own self-concept, feeling powerful and confident, building that self-concept in areas of the ideal self, self-image and self-confidence. And that is referring to Carl Rogers' work, which I really admire. And I feel that little bits and pieces when we are gathering them to the betterment of all, and uh, that is where we all succeed. Uh, cultural intelligence, cultural harmony, creative and curiosity intelligence, to really encourage that, to replace fear and anger with curiosity, to have those as really taught uh, values so that the children may feel psychological safety when they tap into that. 
because the mind works in patterns and association and linking. So when we are able to provide tools that is going to make it more accessible, easy, that supports that feedback is always positive, that failure is only feedback, then we may grow to other levels faster, easier, and more connected. I don't want to take much of anybody's time, but I do like to end with a quote from Dr. Edward Bono, who was the father of lateral thinking. And it says, there is no doubt that creativity is the most important human resource of all. That without it, there will be no progress and we will be forever repeating the same patterns. So I encourage every one of us to really find a common denominator in areas of collaboration, including countries and governments to cross educate the youth and the educators through summits like this and real life events to act to bring the practical part of actually having that experience that will allow us to pivot in a very good and sustainable way. Thank you and many blessings to all of you. Namaste. Uh, thank you, uh, Dr. Sophie Niban. Uh, you have clearly highlighted about uh, 21st century skills. Really, your deliberation was very much useful for the younger generation. Once again, I convey my sincere gratitude to you. Next, I call upon Dr. Bob Chart, cognitive neuroscientist, USA. I request Chart to share his views on uh, future education. Great. Thank you. Uh, and every one of the speakers here have given the, the different different parts that's that's necessary in order for the future of education to be able to move forward. And I'm gonna add in my part and, and I'm gonna be talking about positive psychology and flow and really an important component of that is engagement. Four years ago, I interviewed a young lady on my podcast and what she did in terms of innovation really, really intrigued me. Her, her name is Samira Mehta, and she created a board game called Coder Bunnies. It's it, and it's not a game that's on on computers and everything, but it's a it's a, an actual board game that teaches young kids to senior citizens how to computer code. And it was really really a, a, amazing in terms of what she did, and and about. Three years before that, she started prototyping her game, and and then she she would test it, test it, test it, and, until she ended up per, per, per perfecting it. So, the year before I interviewed her, and this is about five years ago, she was recognized by then President Obama by the city of San Francisco. She teaches computer programming in workshops around the San Francisco Bay Area. An amazing. Uh, lady. And she also was a keynote speaker at, at the Women in Tech Conference. And since then, Samira has been featured in Time Magazine and in Vogue Magazine in India. She's an international keynote speaker. Her initial company is a multi-million dollar company. And I'll get more in terms of, uh, of, of about her at the end. But I want to get into flow. So the founder of Flow, the guy who actually created the, the concept of it, uh, is a, a gentleman of uh, Mihai Czech Set Mihai. If you were to look at his name, it'd be very, very hard for you to actually pronounce. But she, but he's been involved in Flow for over 50 years. Sadly, this past week, Mihai passed away, and and it, it just kind of broke my heart uh, finding out about that. But his research has now moved forward. There's been other people like Stephen Kotler who's been able to move it forward and, and more. And the, the, the concept of flow is about engagement. It's about getting people focused. 
And, 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 and a way flow works, and you may have heard of like being in a zone or in a state of flow. So flow state is, is that avenue, that specific avenue right in this area between anxiety and boredom. So boredom being on a low part, anxiety being on a, on, on, on a high part. And, and in order to engage in a flow, you have to have challenges. Very important. What Samara created in her board game was a series of challenge to take a person from where they're at to the next level, to the next level, to the next level. And while we are in, in the state of flow, there's specific neurochemicals that are actually created. And those neuro neurochemicals, uh, norepinephrine, so that, that's a, a stress hormone, yet with norepinephrine, it, it engages the, the area of, of um, concentration, of being highly focused. Then there's dopamine. And I know that uh, uh, me and, and Dr. Sophie, we talked about uh, dopamine in terms of our laughter mindset workshops and everything, and, and, and as well as some of these other uh, neural chemicals. So dopamine, and, and it, it's actually, uh, I would call it the, the naughty hormone in, in terms of it, it uh, uh, gets us to uh, become a, a, addicted to certain things. And yet, it's very important. It's a very, very important uh, hormone for learning. Endorphins. Endorphins are those uh, neurochemicals. So if, if you're engaged in an activity and let's say you, you, you actually stub your toe, well, you're not going to feel it because uh, endorphins being released while you're engaged in the activity will actually cause the pain to go away. So it's kind of related to morphine in, in that sense. And then there's, uh, then there's oxytocin. So ox oxytocin is the bonding hormone. So this is like when people are engaged and they're very close. So we see this with, with couples, especially r right at the beginning. And, and then the next one is serotonin is also known as the romantic uh, hormone, but it's very, very important uh, component of flow. And then there's, uh, a, a, an anandamide. So th that is the, the uh, neurochemical that helps us to uh, uh, stay uh, like, it's an anti-anxiety hormone, sh should I say. It's also ca called the bliss hormone. And it's probably out of all these hormones, it's, a sh it's the one that has the shortest um, span within our body. So in the state of flow, when you have all these hormones coming in together, that's when you start creating maximum flow. But it's also the maximum state of learning. This is a most highly engaged part. When we can create flow in the classrooms, we're gonna have the most engagement of, of anything that, 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 that we do. Going back to what Samira created in terms of games, and there's been talk here about people playing video games and everything like that. Why do people stay engaged in video games? Why do they uh, eliminate all the distractions around them and they're so focused in terms of, of the video game itself? They're engaged in a state of flow. They're leveling up, they're leveling up, they're leveling up, they're leveling up. They're being challenged at next level, next level, next level. There's, there's an area called gamification. So game Vacation is about taking game technology, like video game technology, taking game technology and applying it into our, our, our lives. So whether it's at work, whether it's in our educational system and so forth, when we can gamify our education and challenge these um, children to go to the next level. See, they may be bored or they may be too anxious. We have to really understand the um, kids in a classroom to, to start to engage them in uh, much, much more. Because if we don't engage them in terms of, of what we're, we're teaching, they're going to zone out. They're going to be distracted. They're going to grab their smart device because they're, you're, you're, you're not challenging them enough as when 
this thing goes off, it releases uh, dopamine into the body. So what are they going to gravitate towards? That. They're going to they're, they're gonna go here, there, there, everywhere. And we have the pseudo um, ADHD that's being created by uh, these devices and then and, and, uh, social media and more. So what we need to do is, is now use the process of, of gamification to get uh, children engaged in a state of flow. And, and I, I can guarantee you when you start doing that, they're, they're gonna be really uh, wanting to learn more. When they're in a flow, they will be learning. When you engage them, they're gonna want more and more and more and more uh, within that. Now, getting back to Samira. And I told you that she has her first company, Coder Bunny. She now has two other companies. She has another game company. And then also she uh, teaches entrepreneurial education on, on, on top of that. And I told you that I interviewed her four years ago and she started prototyping her, her game about seven years ago. Well, how about if I told you that recently Samira turned 13 years old and that she started prototyping her game at six years old. And when I interviewed her, she had just turned nine. And what that tells me is that our, our children, when you can engage them, they're willing to take it to the next level and they, they'll become the creators in our society. I interviewed her parents, and they're both from India, even though uh, they live up in the San Francisco area. They're both from India. Her father's an engineer, and her mother has an MBA. And Samira hired her mother from, from a, a top tech company in the Bay Area to become her business advisor. So uh, again, I know that uh, this this may have been a little surprising when I uh, I talked about Samira being so so young in terms of what she's doing, and yet when you can engage and you allow the children to have a sense of autonomy as well, that they need to have rules and and flow. There's always rules set in place, but there's goals they're going after. So you have the goals. So when you can have children doing that, but don't take away. Don't try to control them like traditional education has done, but allow them to flourish. Very important part of positive psychology is being able to flourish. When you allow them to flourish, they're going to grow. They're going to blossom. And that's exactly what her parents allowed Samara to do. And she blossomed to such an amazing girl who's recognized worldwide now. So uh, I'm going to leave you with that. And, and you can look her up, Samara. Uh, Meta and and she's she'll uh, actually grab your heart as well. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Dr. Bob. Uh, uh, thank you so much for your uh, time and support to make this event a mega uh, success. Next, I call upon uh, Shanti Suliara, educationist from Greece, to share his views on education. Hello all. Uh, once again, nobody can pronounce my name. My name is Xanthi Juliara. I'm from Greece. <laughs> but it's okay. <laughs> I get used to it. Um, uh, the main reason I'm here is uh, to share uh, with you some important issues because we still have Corona-19 if, even, uh, if uh, uh, even no one of us likes it. But it's here. What that means? That means that we had a lot of lessons for the challenges faced, for example, by the Greek Ministry of Education in my case, but uh, from many ministries of uh, education from all over the world. First of all, we realized that uh, we have uh, unpreparedness of our educational systems to provide remote learning, and we still have it. After two years, we are in the same uh, point exactly. Uh, they didn't improve it, I don't know why, but uh, uh, if you see the things and uh, today's reality, uh, we need to face it again and again. 
Uh, also, uh, we have weak educational infrastructure. Even if we don't like it and we need to, to, to provide things that in a better way. Inequality in accessing the internet and uh, also teachers unpreparedness to switch to remote learning. I'm a, a primary school head teacher and I know very well how it works and how many of those uh, challenges uh, we had to face the, those last years, two last years. Uh, to achieve this uh, transformation, uh, this is the only way uh, to get rid of all those uh, problems. Uh, we should uh, exert effort to, first of all, to capitalize on IT. Uh, secondly, to provide training for teachers. Uh, then to review assessment methods, not to keep the old ones. Uh, today's reality is different, so we need new ones. Uh, to engage in a comprehensive digital transformation, uh, build effective uh, partnerships, and uh, this is the most important part, unlearn the old educational strategies and relearn uh, in order uh, to be in line with uh, recent developments as well as with labor market requirements. We need to follow today's uh, reality. Also, uh, COVID-19's uh, global impact on education, uh, in a few words, is uh, according to UNESCO's research during uh, 2020. Uh, in the short term, the positive uh, impact, increased attention and appreciation to distance learning systems. It was uh, uh, something that we didn't know it, the most of us. Uh, growing appreciation and understanding for teachers' role in the community and provision of technical development opportunities related to distance learning for teachers. Uh, in Greece, most of the parents, they say that now we understand your role because we had to guide our kids at home how to follow your lessons. Usually they think that it's a work, okay, everybody can do it. No. It's a very difficult role. And now all the teacher, all the uh, parents, they know how it works. Uh, establishing regional and international partnerships in the field of technology. We had a lot of time to use technology, so we did it. Uh, the negative Im impact uh, in the short term is that uh, the existing uh, gap in uh, distance learning implementation on a national and international levels. We have that gap, we have to accept it. Variation of students' academic attainment based on the ability of educational institutions and countries to provide distance learning. We didn't have equality. Not the same uh, chances of, and opportunities to everyone. Also, negative impact on students, teachers, and parents' quality of life during lockdown. A lot of family fights, a lot of family problems, a lot of financial problems, and of course, a lot of educational problems. Uh, in my school, only the 60% of our pupils had uh, the chance uh, to uh, uh, participate in our online learning. All the others, they had to stay back and to wait till the day that our schools will uh, uh, open again. This is a huge damage uh, to our uh, educational system. And it's only one of uh, the millions uh, schools. In the long term, uh, the positive impact is increasing the scope and uh, reach of education to all segments of society, redefining the role of schools and developing assessment policies. Uh, for example, in Greece, it's the first time that uh, they are trying to build uh, an assessment policy. Let's see what is going to happen. Developing innovative models for higher education and preparing students for new jobs. Establishing partnerships between the public and private sectors. A good and uh, impressive uh, exam is Erasmus Plus projects. They created bridges before, uh, between uh, the public and the private sectors. And uh, 
till now um, it's a, a great step of uh, our educational uh, system in uh, a national, uh, European and international way. The negative impact in the long term is uh, the possible inequality related to educational services provided to students. Uh, decreasing academic attainment in countries that uh, lack uh, uh, technological means to provide distance learning. For example, uh, we had uh, a lot uh, of students that uh, they had to drop out universities because they didn't have the financial efforts uh, to uh, follow the new reality of COVID-19. And uh, can you imagine uh, what happened to doctors? Uh, they had two years to study uh, medicine uh, from distance. How to touch a human body without to practice on it? It's very important, we have to rethink it. Difficult, difficulties in measuring uh, learning outcomes due to undeveloping student performance assessment systems. Uh, to be honest, I don't, I'm not sure if they know uh, all the damages uh, we had. Every day we realize a new one. Uh, COVID-19 disruptions and the future of education, a really important part. An opportunity to address long-standing disparities in access and participation. Also, an opportunity to reframe the right to education. We need to think a lot about it. An opportunity to rethink learning contents, methods, and spaces. We cannot go to space with a donkey. But they demanded from us as teachers. They said, open, turn on your, your computer and do miracles. It doesn't work like this. We need to have the method. We need to have the training. We need to have the tools. We need to have the support. But we started alone. And uh, till, the, till today, only small steps and small help from uh, the ministries. We need to do more. Lessons learned from the challenges faced during the pandemic. Uh, about technological part, we had a lot of gaps in all uh, in online learning, in new assessment modes, in ensuring quality, uh, equity, and equality. We had the opportunity to use IST and platforms and to try, at least to try. Economically, we had the lack of uh, crucial resources. Uh, we tried to solve it with uh, local collaborations. Uh, in about social uh, disruptions, uh, we had social distancing, uh, distancing, excuse me, and uh, segregation. Uh, in order to face that, to uh, they create a lot. We create a lot of social support messages and activities. I'm not sure if uh, they are enough for all of us, especially the ones that uh, they don't have the chance uh, to, to use uh, uh, new technologies. Uh, the political sector, uh, they tried to make a pandemic political. Is it that safe? Uh, maybe only in uh, the term that uh, uh, they tried to build up and uh, local and regional partnerships. What about cultural? Uh, sectors. Uh, culturally, uh, diverse responses. Uh, grooming the culture of tolerance. Uh, we had a lot of uh, dangers about culture. Uh, for the first time, our pupils, our kids, our students, they had to be online alone without to be informed about all uh, the dangers they had to face. So uh, we need to consider uh, again, the way that we used all that technology. And about learning, uh, those gaps in learning and also in uh, psychological uh, barriers, uh, we had some uh, uh, opportunities, but uh, we didn't face uh, the problems. Uh, I'm sure that you understood that I'm trying to give you food of thought, not to, to offer you my uh, thoughts. Uh, that's why, uh, I will stop here and uh, I will give you a lot of time the, uh, until our next summit and to have uh, then uh, a long discussion about the improvement of those uh, things and uh, those issues. Thank you so much. And uh, I need uh, to 
thank uh, the organizers for the great invitation uh, to uh, who, who they made to me. Thank you so much. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you so much for your uh, contribution. Next, I call upon Dr. Captain Dinesha Bharatwaj, uh, Principal, Global Indian International School, Malaysia. I request Shah to share his views on uh, today's education. A very good evening uh, and uh, wonderful to be here. Well, uh, today's education and uh, the level and where we uh, are heading to. Various group, various people have different views. Talk about, when we talk about, I need charger. Yeah, sorry. My uh, system is going out of battery. Uh, just one second, let me plug in yeah, before yeah, I yes. get disconnected. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Thank you so much. I got it. So, uh, yeah. You know, uh, when we talk about the current level, uh, we do analyze and uh, there are various educationists who say that we are on to uh, adding literacy and there is much more to be done. And uh, the world is, you know, brainstorming to together uh, to understand as to where do we need to reach. Uh, there are various forums where I have spoken and I strongly feel on certain aspects which probably uh, most of the speaker give a backseat to and that is analyzing the good things what is there currently instead of uh, you know just saying that yeah there is a long way to go yes I agree always wherever we are there is a long way to go. But most important is to understand, analyze and respect as to where do we stand in current uh, era. What are our past achievements? In whatever culture we are, whatever legacy we hold, there are, uh, there are achievements, there are few uh, levels which are achieved at uh, various levels. Here sitting in Malaysia, when I interact with the many Chinese, you know, like Indian culture and Indian learning, Chinese to have a very rich heritage to understand. And I have seen them bringing it out with a pride that yes, that is where we are, you know, rich into it, Chinese culture, understanding every year, if you know the calendar is out and, uh, you know, every sunshine sign and zodiac sign is out with an animal where they uh, kind of, uh, you know, you assimilate and you understand what will be your next year, uh, how it is going to be and what are the achievements. Uh, looking back, when I look at similar things and much more in Indian perspective, yes, many of us do think and say yeah, there is a science behind it and there is an understanding which need to be developed. But many of us who call themselves actually educationists, we feel that, uh, you know, we, we quietly dump it under... Uh, old understandings or uh, keeping it orthodox or keeping it unscientific and we don't want to look into it. Now today in this forum, when we are talking about the education, the current education, uh, the, the futuristic trends of education and whatever we are refining and doing and redoing and we say unlearning. One thing which we have understood for unlearning is just dump the learning what you have done and go forward. That is a misnomer for unlearning. Unlearning is that being ready for what you have done with that background and being ready to achieve and acknowledge the future of learning. So that is one thing which I want to say that today's education, when we talk about, I'm not only restricting to Indian culture, I'm talking about the heritage of various cultures. When we move forward, there is a platform which we are leaving behind where many of the educationists have brainstormed, worked and achieved. But yes, what happens is there is a dust of destiny which gets, which covers the past knowledge. It was not all that 
blind it was not all that uh, uh, less valued or less uh, achieved it was probably much more than what we are looking forward to so when we talk about today's education as educationist as officer from indian armed forces as an educationist who's there now brainstorming with various heads of various countries as far as the level of education and understanding is concerned i would just like to submit in nutshell today's education is progressive the thoughts are progressive we need to achieve what we look forward which is not visible to us in current era but yes my dear educationists and friends on the this elite forum i would like to request you through this platform that look back and polish it before somebody else comes back and does research on what you have achieved in past and claims it to be his or her tomorrow that is what today's education calls for it calls for polishing what we hold it calls for taking a pride what we carry the legacy it calls for understanding and analyzing you and all of us rather stand to contribute to the world to the level of education we are aspiring for not that only we wait for it to come in our hands given by somebody in a nice gift wrap and say yes this is the this is the achievement in tomorrow's education yeah we are so and so country or so and so culture we have achieved it you also come and follow us the requirement is for wherever we stand rise understand analyze and you wrap the gift and give it to the world as tomorrow's education by nurturing your today and by uh, unveiling your beautiful wonderful scientific legacy of the past so that is what i wanted to contribute i didn't know how much time i have so uh, i think uh, you know in nutshell i can say that take the pride and hold the prestige and tomorrow is yours that is what is today's education calls for thank you so very much thank you so much ma'am uh, for accepting our invitation uh, you have rightly uh, pointed out the power of uh, learning and clean learning thank you so much for highlighting that uh, two important terminology which is really required for uh, today's uh, education and next i call upon uh, dr uh, priyadarshi nayak a founder gtef india to share his views on uh, uh, present education system dr priyadarshi nayak okay we'll move on to the next speaker now i invite dr dheeraj uh, malhotra principal konwas global school lucknow sir are you there over to you dr dheeraj malhotra i think sir left the room it seems uh, next i call upon uh, dr uh, jitesh kanna so thank you so next much i call upon dr jitesh kanna philanthropist from new delhi sir over to you thank you so much um first of all my heartiest congratulations for hosting such a wonderful uh, uh, forum and um, i throughout the forum was continuously listening and learning as much as i could and was um, it was very enriching very different point of views and stuff uh i will keep it very light like i always do uh and first and foremost a lot of heavy things were talked about education and education policies and the future of education uh in fact one of the speaker went ahead and talked about nationalistic education um and i really appreciated uh, his point of views um uh, my my point of view that i wanted to put forward and in, in a very short um in a, i'll take a very small uh, this thing and i'll share it is that we need to really move on even from the nationalistic point of view to internationalistic point of view so we have to understand that we are telling our children to be nationalists which is wonderful and i am a nationalist and i really have this legacy that i have 
uh, and I believe in um, this uh, this idea of of India. But you know what we really need to see in future is that our children are are they transcend the barrier of caste, culture, religion, and race. That's how they will learn. That's the most beautiful way to learn because as long as we are not connected with the world all around us and we are not able to nurture and cherish it, we will not be able to understand education. Now, there are a few small points that I wanted to, because I have almost everything was taken care of in this, this white session. The few points that I wanted to get back to, um, and uh, these points were something that a lot of people here in this session would believe in me. So education is not only about uh, creating great minds and creating great, uh, you know, to helping them find work or probably expanding their mind and stuff like that. Well, education goes much, much more deeper. You know, education is, is basically about igniting the flame. You know, it is about igniting the, the flame of passion, the desire, you know, uh, in the heart of a student. It is, it is basically, you know, helping a child get in touch with his own culture, see a different perspective of life. You know, education makes us free. Now, we have been talking about uh, different technological uh, breakthroughs and, and, and softwares and systems that we can use to enhance education. We also touched upon these wonderful points about uh, how social media is, is impacting education and children. But we don't realize that we cannot stop it now. You know, yesterday when I was reading about how Facebook has started Metaverse, the Meta, the new organization, and soon we will see our children and most of us living in a Metaverse, we'll be living in a virtual reality world. And there would be a time when the reality would be boring and the virtual reality world would be far more interesting. So you can't stop technology. What you can do is you can change people's hearts. You can connect them to age old wisdom. You can connect them to age old things. Uh, you know, you, you know, education is not about, uh, uh, is about uh, only creating entrepreneurs, but I really believe in the future we'll need more entrepreneurs in India. What I'm very bullish about is that India is the youngest nation in the world. You know, 60 to 70 percent of our population is youth. We are the richest paper nation in the world in terms of youth. And youth is the greatest treasure. I never count a country's blessing in terms of their GDP or in terms of uh, how much gold they have or how much reserves they have. But it's the youth that creates the future of a nation. So I am, I am very, very bullish the next 20, 30 years down the line. India is going to be a great, great uh, force to reckon with. Having said that, when I was listening to the entire session, I just realized that we were just primarily focusing on different pedagogies. We were primarily focusing on different uh, data that was coming to us. We were primarily focusing on, uh, um, you know, uh, uh, softwares and, 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 uh, and, 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 you know, and people who are doing innovation in terms of business. And, 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 and we were also talking about all sorts of uh, different rules and regulations that have come out. But if you notice, the more rules and regulation come out in society, the more crimes are happening. You know, even, even if you see in traffic violations, the more stricter the stringent the laws are, the more violations you see. It is because you have to fundamentally change the hearts and minds of people. So the future of education is, is, is great. It's, it's going to be more uh, people-friendly education. It's going to be education where students will be catered and uh, given uh, customized education, uh, children who are good at certain sets and skills, they will be given that kind of education. Children who are good at art, they will be given. All that is there. But, but the real purpose of education is, is basically uh, to fundamentally ensure that knowledge serves to further the cause of human happiness and peace. So if the education cannot bring people together, if education cannot make loneliness go away, if education cannot create better human beings, there is no point. Uh, why I touched upon this point was because after listening to so many wonderful people, um, I really felt that there's nothing left to speak about. But the only point that was missing was that we were not talking about humanistic education. And humanistic education is extremely important in a divided world that we live in now. Now, I've, all the data that I get, all the news that I get, all the information that I get, and I consume tons of information every day, just like others. I have realized that the world is getting divided more and more. And that is why instead of focusing on different pedagogies and all those things, can we go back to the root of humanistic education? An education where we are able to believe in the potential of other people, in the belief in the potential of children. 
uh, we are able to bring the vigorous spirit from the, in, you know from those children. We are able to stimulate them. We are able to uh, help them turn knowledge into wisdom because knowledge and wisdom are two different things. Knowledge seldom distills to wisdom. Uh, you know, if is, is education making us free? Is education making us a slave to uh, consumerism? Is education putting us into a rat race again and again? That is the purpose of education. You know, I've been asked so many times that uh, what is the purpose of education? What is the purpose of education? And I always tell people the purpose of education is happiness. If education cannot make you a happier person, a freer person, or a stronger person, there's no point of having education, you know. educate. You know, So education's main purpose is to become, make you a happier person. There is this existential dread. There is this uh, struggle of being a human being. There is this countless onslaughts of life that come in front of you. If education doesn't prepare you for that, then something is missing in education. So this is one point I wanted to bring. Um, that is the greatest resource, actually. Uh, education is, is basically the treasure that can actually uh, uh, develop human beings at an endless scale. It can encourage youth, a youth-centric education. The second point I want to bring to us is specifically to India, is that if you have seen in, in last few months or years, there's a lot of unemployment in India. And uh, there are, there is, if there's an opening for a job, there are thousands of recruits or thousands of uh, hopeful recruits. So what I really now believe is that I've started an organization called COED, Council of Entrepreneurship Development. And the reason behind this is that I really want the Indian youth to go towards entrepreneurship. Because in future, when the machines are taking over so much of work, when there is so much of uh, lack of work, uh, we need entrepreneurship education. So for that purpose, we are planning to build a platform where we will bring, bring a lot of wonderful people who will help children. So, so if you see in India, we, we live a very homogeneous and heterogeneous way. You have a country, a city like uh, Bombay, where you have a place like Dharavi, which is like the biggest slum in Asia. But in Dharavi, you have people who have more wealth than certain people in certain parts of the country. So we have a very mixed culture in India. So for tier one, tier two, tier three cities, there are a lot of children who have no resources, but a lot of great ideas and they're ready to work very hard. So for them to reach out to them and provide them entrepreneurship education, that is very important. So these are the two aspects I've been working on. One is the humanistic form of side of the education uh, that I wanted to talk about. I know it is probably going out of the way, I, I'm digressing a bit. And the other is entrepreneurship education. These are the two things that I'm really working on. And I'm really looking forward to this for a lot of people to join us in this initiative and help India become an entrepreneurship capital. Because we have the youth, we have the resources, we have all the strength, we have all the uh, pros, we have the cons too, and we have tons of cons, but what we have is youth. And as long as there is a single youth that stands up, I mean, the, the nation, uh, you know, the nation will prosper. So that is what I wanted to talk about. Thank you so much. I will not take more time. A lot of talk, topics have been taken care of. But this is something that I wanted to talk about. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you, Dr. Uh, DJ Stanna, on your uh, views. Uh, uh, important announcement to all the panelists over here. If I miss out anybody's name, please text your name in the chat box. Meantime, I would like to capture the uh, virtual group photo. We had a wonderful panelist today. Uh, on day one of uh, World Education Summit. So I request all the panelists and speakers to switch on your uh, camera to capture the uh, virtual group photo. If I miss out anybody's name, please text your name in the chat box. I request all of you to switch on your camera for a moment. We have seen one name in the chat box. And now I call upon Dr. Mega Sharma. Yeah, hi. Mega Sharma, founder, managing director, Vampire All Foundation, Mumbai. 
Ma'am, over to you. Please share your views on today's topic. Uh, well, today's topic has been very enlightening, listening to different speakers. Personally, it was enlightening to me also to do a lot of data research and know how slave we are, uh, you know, towards the technology. And uh, whatever has been discussed today is going to be the way forward. <clears throat> Entrepreneurship, as uh, rightly just said, that, you know, is the way forward. Many kids are going to be there, you know, working on their own terms. There is a lot, uh, a lot of change that will happen, uh, which may have happened, uh, say, 10 years down the line. But due to COVID, the kind of, uh, the kind of technology usage we have done, the kind of changes we've made, the kind of uh, thought processes that have happened, uh, you know, it's like, you know, we've come forward. So there's a time machine, uh, you know, that we've understood that, you know, we've at least come a decade before what we would have come 10 days, 10 years later. So, yeah. Thank you so much for organizing this summit. Very, very enlightening. Thank you. Thank you so much, ma'am. It is time to uh, conclude uh, the day one of uh, World Education Summit. Uh, distinguished delegates, I would like to start my concluding remarks with a simple message. Thank you all, whether you are from abroad or you are already here in India, whether you participated directly or you worked to behind the scenes, you have all shown your commitment. And because of you, this first day session of World Education Summit was a successful one. I hope you all have enjoyed yourself today and learned something from this uh, deliberation. Thank you all again for being here and I encourage you all to stay connected with each other on the road ahead. We'll meet again tomorrow at 6.30 p.m. for the second day session of World Education Summit 2021 with the different panelists. Until then, take care, goodbye, stay safe. Thank you. Thank you. Is the group photograph done? Yes, sir, yes, sir. Okay, thank you. Bye.